Hi folks. Today I'm just this might be the last one I do for a while on the subject because it does seem other people who are more knowledgeable and more intelligent than me are talking about it and I don't want to guess at everything. So it's about the Lucy case and how I've said I'm not I've got an open mind. I'm not saying she's guilty. I'm not saying she's innocent. I'm saying that the case seems rather odd and the behaviour she's had doesn't suggest she's guilty. Now before we start, just um, it might be worth you looking up, it's only a few years ago that, I'll just read the name out, I'll probably pronounce it wrong, Lucia de Burke and I think it was um, Denmark, she was um, charged with um, killing babies, she was a nurse and has been found innocent recently. Um, it's worth just pointing that out because I think um, a lot of people are comparing this case to that, and there might be others. Um, oh, sorry, somebody in the background there. Now, before I start, I'm just going to give you the reason why I set up this channel, and the reason I did was because. I consider a lot of journalists, the media, rather lazy, who can't be bothered in recent years to investigate anything. They, they seem to do no more than just read the news off Twitter and that's that and accept everything. In the old days, I suspect they might have bothered to investigate things. Um, and it reminds me of the um, lockdowns like I've always said I was I always questioned the lockdowns and the fake masks wearing because I always said unless you've got N95 or N99 masks on I saw a little point wearing these fake masks that often didn't even fit the face and as you breathed in and out the air was actually going out the gaps on the side of the face and in reality they only seemed to do just the, the only thing they seemed to achieve was to make um, silly left-wing middle-class people feel a bit safer rather than actually do anything. And in fact, I'd argue they probably did more harm because they gave a false sense of security. So people went to see relatives wearing these silly masks thinking they were safe and their elderly relatives then got the old COVID and died because there was nothing, you know, they're basically breathing in and out. And then they were going, gosh. I also pointed out I never saw any use in the lockdowns because, you know, it was one thing to, if you wanted to lock your relatives down, if that's what they wanted, because a lot didn't want it. There were, the, you know, I spoke to, we used to walk the dogs in the woods. And back then, like now, I see one or two people. You, you'll have seen on the other ones I'm stopping and starting this. But it's usually every 10 minutes. Back then, uh, it, the woods were literally ran packed with people because they were too scared to go anywhere because of the police. And all these elderly were just walking around the woods because they wanted to get out. And they all told me they were happy to risk it. And so, you know, the question was, um, what was the point of the lockdowns? Because I never saw any use to them. I'm not sure. I mean, don't forget, originally it was supposed to be to slow COVID and then suddenly overnight it was to stop, you know, stop COVID. They changed the narrative, didn't they? These people who are pro the you know, lockdowns. Um, it never seemed logical to, because we we're all still going out shopping and mixing. And that became a joke in itself because they had us all queuing outside the shops for hours, breathing in COVID and cigarette smoke. Rather than in my case where I just would run into a shop, buy one or two items and leave, I'd be I'm normally in and out in five minutes. Um, it seemed to do the opposite. But yet, all the media carried on saying, oh, this is the correct thing to question it. You're a fool, you're a moron. And yet, you know, the result seemed to be, again, I, I question if it actually saved a single life. Because, from what I gather, all the um, old people's home still got COVID. And, in fact, I'm not sure if there was any way to stop it going in. Because, 
you know, the staff were mixing themselves with family and the moment, even if they wore masks, I don't think it was feasible to stop them passing it on, even with the best masks in the world. I think there would be still a chance in the moment one elderly person gets it, it just spreads. Um, and so the result seemed to be that rather than actually saving lives, so I'm just checking it's recording, is it recording? What happened, I noticed, was people start, sat home becoming alcoholics, the business became, went bust, they lost jobs, people committed suicide, and I know people committed suicide because I know people who did commit suicide. So all that rubbish from the lefties who say, oh, that's untrue, well, then I'm a liar, aren't I? Not only did people, you know, and the mental health have seemed to affect it. I'd even question, it, are we now having a lot of kids um, trying to gain control from the lockdowns by claiming that the trans are, you know, non-binary and all this, just as a way of, because they've become mentally unwell. Um, you know, and we, obviously people died from not getting hospital appointments, so you've got all of those, the cancer treatments. So, you know, I'd, I'd, question, I'd say that all the lockdowns did was result in many deaths from healthy people who'd be alive. And I think, I mean, if you look at the stats, which I always did, the government official stats, the um, death rate was basically those over 80. Those under 80, the death rate was very low. And even those who died, they had conditions, cancer, blah, blah, blah. If you look at the stats, very few who died had no known illnesses. And just because they had no known illnesses doesn't actually mean they didn't have any underlying health. It was just that it wasn't known. Oh, we're walking past my favourite cows. Hello, sweeties. At least they look happy now. Um... So you had a situation that the real people who were dying, and again, we've got to remember that with the old COVID, the um, suggestion was people weren't recorded dying from COVID, but with COVID, as in, you know, you could fall off a ladder and they'd still record it as dying with COVID. So the stats there again are a bit, we could question. And if you look at the death rate, it didn't seem to go spike much higher than normal. No, no higher than sort of the average, um, what you'd expect with um, normal, what is it, not colds, the old flu. Um, anyway, but again, we had everyone going along, didn't we? I don't think any, again, this is why I find them all lazy because no one seemed to question it. They just, you know, this is what we've been told. We won't question it, we'll just go along. And to me, that's not journalism, no investigation. Let's say it was correct to lock down. And let's say the masks were valid, even though the BBC, don't forget, by the way, the BBC um, about a year or so ago has released an article, you can Google it, go online now, it upsets people and I show it it does state very clearly that non-medical grade masks do nothing for a person but may 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 and always the word is may protect others but that doesn't mean it does and I'd say may just you know it's as likely protecting others as as sticking a leaf on your head I mean you know we could say um, walking around with a plant pot on your head may protect others that's you know that's the scientific nature there so you know none of these people considering that a lot of people were questioning you think that they'd investigate and again prove us all wrong prove that um, lockdowns were efficient and explain how they were working and why it was worth people you know losing their lives from cancer because Again, I'd, I'd say that it didn't do anything. And I'm not even sure it even slowed COVID down. It might have done by a day or two. I don't think if it had been left to go rampant, we'd have seen that much spike in the hospitals. 
the overload situation, I'm not sure would have happened. Um, anyway, as I say, to me, this doesn't seem much different. The same people are, again, you see, what I'm, why, why I'm talking about this is because I was um, turned on the old YouTube today and I was watching um, a film from Talk TV where they're questioning, should this um, nurse, um, should people be going out and setting up a fund to, you know, see if this lady's guilty or not? I forget what the technical term is. You go, when you, if you go to prison, you can appeal. Is that it? Appeal. And the presenter who, again, he was smugly going through the lockdown saying, oh, you were basically, you were supporting the lockdowns. He was going through, although he did slightly change his view, I noticed as the months went by. Um, he was sort of going, well, I can't see a reason why she should appeal. Because uh, he quoted, well, it mean that you'd have to have something dodging the evidence or something new came to light. Well, I'd say that the evidence doesn't exist. And I think it is. I mean, another chap on the panel saying, oh, she shouldn't appeal. You're a, I think he called people stupid for doing this. Well, in that case, all the people, like the chap who was just been released recently, who I think was, might have been investigated by Manchester police, who seemed to, well, I don't know how you describe the handling of the evidence of this rape trial. Well, in his opinion, I presume he should still be in prison. He shouldn't have the right to, you know, challenge anything, along with everyone else. And don't forget, we've had many, many instances where you, the feeling is, is the police are just going out um, and not actually examining their own evidence. It was like, you know, there was those um, child charges um, where that chap who, he sounded like he had mental health problems, who was claiming that it was people were murdered and all this and again I, I'm not sure if it was you know I think he's in prison now but I do think you know it sounded as if he had mental health problems but the police even though there was seemed to be evidence to doubt his I mean I, I don't think they even investigated these murder claims they claimed which would have been straightforward I mean this is um, you know this is the police we have they don't seem to be doing things that I'd imagine even someone thick like me would have done. The moment he makes a claim of murder of his friends, wouldn't he investigate, see if that someone actually had been murdered? But now the police seem to, from my understanding, I might be wrong, I could be wrong on that, carried on and just accepted everything he said. Oh, someone's coming, hang on. Hi folks, we're back. Um, people walking past. So, again, I find it really disturbing when you have presenters on news channels saying nobody should have this right, or, you know, it's not as if, uh, in fact, one of the presenters did say, oh yes, well, the cir evidence was circumstantial. Even she was sort of hinting she had some doubts, and yet they're going on trying to make out that, oh no, it's silly to investigate, you know, we're happy. As long as we're happy she's been sent down, does it matter if she's guilty or not? We think she's guilty, and because we think she's guilty, that's guilt, isn't it, folks? That's how the media seem to operate. Um, oh, by the way, talking about how lazy the media is, I, when I turn the BBC website on, there's been um, a murder of somebody um, because in Manchester, the, uh, and I think they've got the person, or, or people have been arrested, because I think they were broke into his house trying to steal his dog, or dogs. And is that the top of the um, thing on the BBC? No, what's important is the mugshot, apparently, by the um, ex-president. Um, he still has the title of president, as all ex-presidents do. So his title is still, I believe, my understanding is President Trump. And I think all, um, one the, that's 
the title they keep for life, right, my understanding. So to say President Trump doesn't mean he's still president, it just means that's the title he's awarded. Now, that becomes the top of the news. Odd thing to do. But this just shows you the laziness of the media. The Daily Mail did seem to have it at the top. And we can obviously that's another subject is, you know, do, you know, I, I think we live in a society in England where you can't really defend yourself. You have to almost wait, you know, some breaks in, you have to accept it. If they kill you, so what? That seems to be the attitude. Because, you know, there's, um, this is a, there's a lazy thing in the law where it says reasonable your defence, well, you know, if you got a crowbar and smack the guy in the face and he dies, I'm sure they'll class that as not reasonable, but what are you supposed to do? I mean, if you're, you know, there are people out there who are very strong. Let's say you're a strong bloke. I'm not. But I know there's people out there who can kill somebody with one punch without any effort, not because they're mean to. They're just very well, they're just strong. And are they going to, you know, this is a, anyway, that's another subject. I, I think, you know, I, I think the law needs to change to allow people to defend themselves. Because I'm afraid, even like now when I'm walking, supposing somebody comes up, I might, you know, the attitude seems to be I'm supposed to allow them to do it. And if I get killed, well, the police will maybe arrest somebody. Um, I mean, the interesting thing was yesterday, I was filming, as you might see, an incident. I don't know if the guy had mental... I, I, I didn't allow pictures of him. I just, uh, you know, I changed it to cartoon-like because I wasn't sure the guy had mental health problems. And I don't think it's fair. If he was a criminal, I'd have not bothered, I'd have, you know. But when it's somebody who may have been... Um, of you know, or even on drugs, perhaps. I thought I thought about it, and I did decide it wasn't right to show his face. Um, I don't think you can identify him by the cartoonish one. Hang on, is somebody coming? I can hear somebody in front. Oh, I think they're on the other side. Um, I'm going off track now. God, I can't remember what I was just talking about. Um, oh yeah, I was talking about, you know, protection. Anyway, let's go back to the thing because I've completely lost my, mi my mind there. I've gone completely off track. You see, I'm dyslexic, folks. Um, so you'll notice that in some of the writings. People think they're clever when they go, Oh, you can't spell, as if that's supposed to put me down and make out I'm stupid. Well, if that makes you feel better. Oh, hang on, someone's... I'll have to get off. One sec. Hi, we're back. My silly little girl dog. She um, she was barking at something, but there was no one there. Well, no dogs there. She did this in London. She was barking at a statue of a dog. I mean, she's not the smartest girl in the world. Anyway, we're back to the subject. So, let's go to... Th this is what... I'm going to talk about now the main bit right is this Lucy case and I'm going to say it following when you look at it all the evidence doesn't seem to exist that's my impression from you know and I'll go through it because everything people have said as circumstantial evidence just seems to be nonsense now Let's start off with the main thing, the murders. The first thing we have to ask ourselves is, has, has there actually been a murder? There doesn't seem to be evidence of any murders. That's it. We have dead babies, but this is a neonatal ward, and as I've said this before, neonatal, oh, what is it recording? neonatal wards is where very sick babies go, and it's not unexpected they're going to die. We have to remember that in some cases there'll be parents who are going to have given birth who are drug users, alcoholics and all sorts. I came across, you know, I was, as, as I said, I was a student nurse on learning disabilities. And sadly, 
sadly, one of the reasons why there were um, a few adults, because there were adults on my place, who were extreme, they were real, they couldn't feed themselves, couldn't move, they were, um, the whole bodies were twisted, some were blind, deaf, all sorts, because the parents were alcoholics. The mother was an alcoholic, I was pointed out. Um, obviously that won't be every case, but there was, I think, two cases where it was because the parents were just garbage, really, if you could say anything. Well, sorry. How can I describe a parent as alcoholic who's, um, you know, got pregnant? And by the way, a little tip, if you plan on getting pregnant, quit alcohol, I'd say at least a couple of years before you even decide to get pregnant. In fact, to be honest, and I'm going to say this, and it applies to males too, if you plan on having babies, I'd say don't drink, just be safe, don't do drugs. It's just not worth the risk at any point until you've had your kids, then party as much as you want. Um, in fact, it was a reason, you know, I, I refused to have a, a kid with a, a woman because she, I knew she was drinking and she was saying, well, she'd quit the moment she got pregnant. Well, you know, it wasn't, it's not going to happen. Um, anyway, because I'm not going to risk it. I mean, and it, you know, I don't drink, you see. So perhaps I've got a bit of a, an anti-drink thing. But anyway, that's going off subject, folks. The fact is, this is a world where babies do die. And we have to remember that the um like i said it's not uncommon these are very sick babies so don't get in your head folks this is normal ward and oh gosh there's a death that's very suspicious it's this is a whole different game folks this is where very sick babies go and many will die unfortunately it depends on the stats i mean you're gonna have there'll be many factors around you know survival rates it'll be I mean, you could even go location to location, but I suspect there'll be parts of the country where it's better start simply because the parents are healthier and so on. Maybe, um, you know, but like I said, I don't know the, um, the condition of the parents or what the health was. I mean, it might be online. I haven't bothered looking, to be honest with you. So... The first thing we have to do, which is the main one, let's get the main one out because this is the, seems to be the main evidence or circumstantial evidence, which I, even I, up till a few days ago, I was saying, yeah, that, that's, you know, I couldn't explain it. But the um, podcast, well, is it a podcast? The YouTube vid of the doctor and the other chap, I'll put a link, I'll put a link on the other. Um, my other podcast about this and I've also embedded the vid on my website so it's there um, so if you street hawk with a little whatever it's there's a, it's not a gap but it's a line thing in between so it's street line thing hawk dot com com um, you'll find it there but I'll put a link on so I always, try, I always try to remember to put links so people can check out evidence. Um, they, the doctor there, and again, I think he's in. I think he's very into the nursing side of things, but I'm not sure. He talks about it, so it sounds like he's a teacher. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I was a bit half asleep to be honest, listening, so a bit naughty there. But they talked about this and. They were suggesting, again, I don't know if it's true or not, because unless I see the official stats, I'm always, I get uncomfortable quoting third party things. I like to just quote official stats. So I'm just going by what they're saying. And I thought it was interesting. They were debating, stating that, in fact, she wasn't the only nurse on duty at the time by this of the desk, because they were saying their argument, and I don't know if it's true or not. Again, we have to, you know, I put that caveat in. There are debate, and you need to listen to the video, really. 
um, because it's much clearer what they're saying than me repeating a third party without understanding fully. But what I gather was, to summarise badly, that there were a lot more deaths and what they believe happened is the, um, they've just simply um, dismissed some conveniently to fit the narrative. They've gone, well this nurse has had the most deaths and therefore we'll ignore all the other deaths and produce a chart which says we believe all these are murdered you see again we don't know I mean I, my, one of the things I would say is I'd question if any of there is any evidence of murder or the all natural deaths or deaths to other complications because again further into the video they talk about the plumber which I believe I think that was except in court in fact I think the plumber was a witness um, who we have this involvement of how the plumbing was affected. The nurse, uh, Lucy, informs us, she um, states in video, I think it was 36 on the Daily Mail podcast, they inform us that she in court stated that she recognised the plumbing was dodgy and nurses couldn't, or doctors or the staff, couldn't wash their hands though she didn't see, again, remember, she's not um, an expert in um, other diseases, um, but she couldn't, she didn't connect it to the death of the babies. But in this, this um, doctor and this chap, they discuss the belief that they claim that there's a pipe over the babies and there's, they believe there's a possibility that there's an infection um, because I think the pipes were carrying sewage, if I remember, poop, to be blunt, and wee-wee and other toxic things. Now, you know, you can imagine that wouldn't be very healthy for um, you and me, who are healthy. Um, because they were saying that they were saying this is these viruses or whatever you call them are in your body, as in your gut, but that's your body can do it but if it enters another part of the body it becomes dangerous so even as an adult who's healthy in theory I presume that would make you very ill or possibly kill you I mean I can't imagine um, sewage in a pipe that's festering would be very healthy and they were suggesting that there's a belief a possibility that this has dripped onto the babies as it goes through the pipes, these faulty old pipes. Um, and therefore, that could be the reason. I think they were suggesting as one of the theories. Which, again, if you have that, you suddenly have doubt, which means you can't convict her if that was introduced. Now, again, that's your main one. So, if you actually, if it is the case that she isn't the only nurse when all the deaths occurred and they've just simply conveniently ignored the babies who weren't there, then your argument of coincidence suddenly goes straight out the window. And then you've got other bits. Now, on this again, this chap talks about nurses taking notes. Um, crossover notes, I forget if that's a technical term, home. And other nurses have said this, I've seen them on other websites stating this is normal, which is interesting. By the way, I've noticed this, that a lot of nurses seem to be saying, saying on other sites, this nurse has not acted how they don't, you know, they, they don't see any actions in this nurse that is dodgy. That's why I think all of her friends and associates seem to still be backing her because they don't see her actions as wrong. Now, the argument, what, what he said is that it's even advised to take these notes home. I mean, I wasn't, sure, I wasn't aware of this myself as a student nurse, but it seemed logical. There are, the debate is, if, say, you know, you need to contact the nurse, 
if something, you know, you were, you know, about the a patient, especially the argument was in very severe cases where patients are very ill, you might need to check to see has has um, the patient been given a drug and talk about it. Now, obviously you could guess, but that becomes dangerous. You might be wrong. You could say, oh yes, I did give this patient a drug, or I didn't. Then 10 minutes later, oh my goodness, I forgot, that's a different patient, I'm half asleep. Um, you know, so the argument is, is that you have these notes to hand. So there's nothing suspicious there. There's also the diary, again, not only did this doctor confirm it, but I've read other nurses have stated this is perfectly acceptable. This is what you're told to do. You keep a diary because, um, you know, you, you need it for qualifying. Every few years it was pointing out that, um, I think he was saying in the UK it's every three years and in other countries it might be every five years where you have to produce evidence, which I knew about. I knew as a student nurse that's what you do once you pass. You keep, you've got to show you've done X amount of hours and how you've dealt with patients. Um, and that's part of the thing. And I've said that all of them, all nurses do this. And again, it even goes on to the um, LO, which the police try to suggest is some code, which simply, which even when you look at it, it's clearly a D. Um, LD for long day and that's what it is there's no code there, it's just a standard and apparently every nurse has stated yeah we all do that so now you've got the situation that where everyone, you know you've been told this is about get keeping hold of um, you know mementos of your crimes, well suddenly we find this is a standard thing so Surely that evidence couldn't be included, so you dismiss that, don't you? Or do you keep a special case for her? Um, then we move on to the, um, the her looking up Facebook things. Well, she's never denied it. She was everyone. Uh, there was an interview I watched where one of her associates said, "Yeah, that's what she does." And you know, I think a lot of people, probably nurses, would keep an eye on. Um, the patients. I think I would have done these days. In the, when I was a student nurse, we didn't have. I don't. I can't. It might be in the early days of Facebook. Um, when I was a student nurse, it was the time of Diane's death because I remember it on TV. I was either in the first or second year. Um, so back then, I don't think mobile phones were. They, if they existed, I don't think it was that common to use. So for her to look up I, I think that'd be I'll be perfectly honest because I was doing learning disabilities I think it'd be important especially if you was doing um, I could imagine if you were a nurse doing um, other things such as mental health I think it'd be actually important to make sure you're keeping an eye on your patients to see if they're posting anything like you know weird thoughts so you can uh, you can tailor the treatment in fact it's a I've said this before it seems quite relevant because you can see how people are thinking. Now, the flip side of that too is, if you, the argument has been she's doing it to see, ascertain or get pleasure from seeing the parents upset. Well, on Facebook, it's usually just people posting, you know, baby had just died. There won't be a huge amount. I can't see, you know, it's not like people are posting videos of themselves crying. There'll be, it doesn't seem to be something you could grab get anything from it's uh, uh oh, oh someone's coming hang on hi folks back again just chatting to some dog walkers now let's think where we got up to um i think we covered the documents and the um i forget what evidence i was just talking about then um but yeah the um like I say, just to recap, the um, coincidence with the, there's a doubt now, doubt I'd say, unless they're lying, which I don't think they would go onto the internet and publicly state this, that there were other deaths and they've been ignored. So obviously if we were to look at the chart, which would be interesting to see, because then you've got to, 
explain, well, if she wasn't on duty and other babies had died, well, you know, isn't that a bit odd? Um, and by the way, if we're capping on to um, the um, Daily Mail, um, the Daily Mail podcast number 36, which I referenced, the one I've listened to, uh, I was just to point out again, um, she, and I think it's agreed that other staff are coming and going, and she, her claim is, again, she points out the um, plumbing's blocked and she de- she, you know, she points out, and again this could be proved, um, makes me wonder if the police have investigated, she points states, and she might be lying obviously, that um, she thinks things didn't happen in time such as the blood transfusion took too long and things were coming from other hospitals and some of the doctors didn't know how to do procedures because they've never experienced it and she points out a case where when she's seen it being done before they used the stitches and the doctor and this used plasters. There was just things like this. Um, so, we, we, like I said, we're going through all the evidence that people have used against her. Oh yes, let's go on to the um, bit where all the clever clogs on the internet, all these psychiatrists are trying to make a name for themselves. They claim that she's got some sort of Munchausen syndrome. Well, I don't think there's any single bit of evidence for that. They try to suggest that... Oh, by the way, before I forget, don't forget the DI in, who was involved in this case, he or she, stated that her making these notes um, was, unli- was not expected after she was being investigated. Um, we'll talk about that for a moment, but just to recap... We know she was, um, or the evidence suggests, she was um, being investigated and because of that she was suffering de- high depression, she was on high drugs, um, she was really depressed and therefore it's logical to presume, well, she even started writing about suicidal thoughts and um, she was questioning, has she done something wrong? All these, are, I'd suggest, are perfectly normal if you think it's not. I don't think you understand how people think. I think yeah, probably most people would have done the same. But anyway, going back, so there's people coming. So I'm bouncing around here. Oh yeah, by the way, she didn't destroy the notes, which she's under investigation. Guilty people, I would have thought, would have destroyed notes if not, not made them. But she doesn't. Again, all these things are, are not actions of someone guilty. I think some of might be from front. So let's go on to the um, this Munchausen syndrome. Right. Now, I'm not an expert on it. I'll admit that. Hands up, I might be talking rubbish. But I'm not sure there's any signs of her controlling. We've not heard uh, anyone come out and say that I'm aware of that she tried to control anybody. Um, she hasn't tried to control her family, her friends, her work colleagues. That's what you'd have expected if she had some sort of mental control. Um, I'm not sure if there's any evidence. Uh, the paperwork where she's um, saying she's in love and all this doesn't seem unreasonable. That doesn't seem to be anything out of the blue. There's no sort of, I'm going to kill my boyfriend or whatever, or he needs to live with you know, Nothing strange. The notes I've heard do not sound mental health. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think there's anything to suggest she's bombarding with um, text, any of these things. There's also no suggestion that she tried to control the media. Because often one would expect, I would say, that um, when people are trapped and into the controlling thing, they want to control everything and they'd be straight out, um, giving a sub story to the media. And usually the police usually allow this because it's a way they can dig, you know, they sit there waiting for it. Like the chap with them um, who um, set fire to his house out of greed, apparently, and many of his children died. Now, you know, a normal person, when it's your own children, you'd probably just, I think if you killed your own kids, well, I'm not sure you'd really want to live. Um, if I was to even kill one of my dogs by accident, I think I'd be suicidal. I don't think I could cope with it. So I'd imagine if you got your kids, or you'd hand yourself into the police. Um, but anyway, instead, because of his controlling nature, 
because they did come again. This is a guy who appeared to be very controlling, very concerned, you know, of people. Um, he tried to go out and control the media, didn't he? And the police sat there knowing he was guilty, but they let him do it because by doing so, his actions, the way he was acting, this fake pretending he was crying, was it was just to add to the case. And that's usually what they do. If you, you know, in this case, you'd have, I think, we would have expected that. And there's nothing to suggest that. Again, you know, the, some tweet on the internet, not internet, but even a psychiatrist, I think, even suggested that she left the notes on purpose to be cut, which I think is as ridiculous as anything. Um, again, it might all be true, but I dismiss that. I don't think there's anything, in my opinion, that suggests she has got any control in nature. There's nothing there. Again, she's got, um, again, she's got friends, family, ch um, even close children to her in family. She doesn't seem to have. There's nothing there to suggest she's got any sort of problems with relationships with people. Um, the house, the show pitch as well. It doesn't look like a house that's really that controlled. You know. I'd say, you know, the bed was unmade. Well, I'd imagine that somebody into control would maybe have the bed perfect, books would be in a Pacific card, all these things. There'd be things about control. It just didn't feel like that. Um, and again, we have to remind ourselves, the DI of the case himself, or herself, stated that the, she carried on making notes and they wouldn't, in his opinion, or her opinion, wouldn't expect that. That's actually the DI, not me saying it, the DI of the case. So what you're left with is nothing really. It's just almost seems to be there were deaths, we need an explanation, well then investigate. Was there other factors? You know, there, there'd be questions there. Um, again, I still... I'd, I'd question the um, what evidence. It doesn't seem to be any. Oh, did I, I'll repeat something. I can't remember if I mentioned it on this. Um, one of the things on podcast thirty six was I, I I misunderstood the communication of when we talk when they're talking about injecting milk or air into the babies. It appears to be, or at least on this one occasion, the. Um, the the accusation is they've got feeding tubes and they're claiming she, for some reason um, you know a feeding tube will, I presume will be from the nose to the stomach and the accusation is she's forced either air or slash and milk into the babies killing them which you, that's going into the stomach now. This is why it stunts it. I think there's one occasion they've seen one of the babies had... I mean, the the, the expert they had stated that um, it wasn't uncommon to see air in the stomach, but it was the air bubble in the um, spinal cord, which is very rare. Now, his, uh, his view was it's a trauma thing or a certain illness they've seen it in. I think there was only six cases or something that's been noted very rare the trauma being usually involved in a car crash and I forget the illness you can google it I think it's um, it's one where they considered the body and presumably the body was so weak I don't know um, but it's very rare but again if you go down this line you'd have to I'm not sure how that would happen if she's injecting it into the stomach would you know was there any evidence that if you squirted um, milk or water into a baby's stomach it would create this um, I wasn't sure you see to me is this just a coincidence um, oh and I think there was some suggestion that this nurse was cold with some parents well again professional nurse I've seen them they're so used to doing things it's automatic you know what you and me might think you'd be oh this is a major thing 
to a nurse or a doctor, there's a you know an experienced one that's just run of the mill. And sometimes, and I've said this before, I've seen parents who are thinking the nurse is a bit cold, and it's just because they're not. It's just a run of the mill thing for them. You know, it's not something. Well, it might be more traumatic to a parent, to a nurse. It's not. I mean, it was like I always say when I, when I was a student nurse, you get um, injected for I forget what it is to protect you from um, oh gold. Um, you get a few injections to protect you from things, and we was booked in one day, several hours into one of the hospitals for this doctor to give an injection because it was presumed it'd take hours. Well, it literally got through us. I think it probably did it about ten minutes. The whole of us. And I think I was last, and I jokingly said to him, have you got an appointment? And he went, yeah, I've got a golf game. No, he wasn't doing anything. He just, he was that skilled. He could do it that quick. There was nothing unprofessional what he did. It was perfect. Um, I mean, I couldn't even feel the injection. It was probably one of the best injections you'll ever get. It was that skilled. But it was so skilled, he could do it quite quick. One of the mill, he wasn't thinking about it. Well, if I did, it'd probably take me an hour. Um, and I probably mess it up. Um, I was very impressed by the speed it could do it. But this is what I'm saying. I met a lot of nurses who were like this. Who were so skilled. It was just run of the mill. Um, and we also got men. But like I said, is um, and I'm going to say something which isn't very nice, but it's possible some of the parents who were on this, you know, giving evidence may may not be the um, you know, there may be druggies, to be fair, and looking at our scummy people. I don't know. They might all be nice people. But it could be, some might be exaggerating what they've seen, hoping for a payout. People do. Um, you know, one of the problems is people see money and rather than, you know, they might actually not think the nurse is wrong, but money comes into it. And as far as they're concerned, They'll hang somebody if they can get money out of it. I've seen people, you know, it's it's human nature, unfortunately, by some people. Um, but I'm not saying that that's what's happened, as when they've given witness statements. But um, I mean, they have they have them purposely, which is fair enough. Not named anybody, but you know. There's part of me wondering, is it because one or two of the families aren't particularly... Well, let's put it this way. If one of the families was a druggie, then people were saying, hang about, that's natural death. How's that murder? That's what I'm saying. It's you, There's that sort of element to it. Um, but again, we've got to remember that. My understanding is there's no... On none of the babies, there's an autopsy done of the dead ones. So it's all presumed... And again, you know, this is the whole problem is that this is, seems to have been investigated, what, a year after or something. Now, you'd imagine, to be fair, you'd, you know, if you had suspicion of murder, that's it instantly. You close the ward or anything down, preserve the evidence, and then the police investigation goes in, and then you're either clearing the person who's been accused or, you know, you've got evidence against them. Again, my comparison is, you know, what happens, you know, somebody in this ward, if they were to drop down dead, and then in a year's time, suddenly someone decides I'm the murderer, well, you know, it's, you know, it could easily just be a case of like this, or I'm the expert, you know, I'm the expert, in my opinion, that person was poisoned by this person, even though they've been cremating with no evidence of it. Well, they might just die naturally. But again, we've got to go back to the neonatal thing being, we have to expect a certain amount of death. So um, what we'd need to look at is actually how many did die in this time frame. Because, oh, by the way, uh, can't do this um, YouTube vid for this doctor. He's claim, I think he was claiming that the death rate actually went back up again. So it didn't decrease, but I might be wrong on that. Um, again, we don't know if they say they're factually correct or not. We have to keep an open mind. It'd be incorrect of me to 
use a third party that I don't know of who could be making all this. So again, they could be making it all up, but let's say they're not making it up. Now you've got serious questions. Um, I mean, are, are the police again in Manchester again? I, I quit, are they the ones who were involved in this rape? Peep, you know, is it the same police force that was involved with manipulating the evidence to suggest this guy was a rapist, and it turns out he's not because he was from Manchester. Um, I mean, is this common practice? It wasn't that long ago, that many years, he was convicted. So, you know, there's, you know, again, it could be common practice. This is what this police force does. And is that what they've done with the stats? Um, but yeah, so now I've gone through everything. What, what is the evidence pointing to her? Because it does feel that the only thing that they've done is they've gone, that she is a scapegoat, as she's claimed. They've gone, there's been some deaths. We consider it too high a number. Let's point at somebody and then let's um, suggest them things about her. Now, you know, I, one of the things I'd be wondering is, do the police have doubts themselves? Because after all, if you've got the DI saying she hasn't behaved as they would expect, the suggestion there is she hasn't behaved like a guilty person. That's my interpretation. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to put words in this DI's mouth, but what other conclusion would you expect? Um, but as I say, there seems to be now a lot of people questioning things. And I think a lot seems to be coming from nurses, actually, who were saying... No, this is how you'd normally behave. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd quite, I'd go listen to, rather than me drivel on my nonsensical nonsense, I'd listen to that chap, them, well, these two chaps, and see, oh, what's going on here? I can hear some, I don't know if it's some um, farming equipment, I'm just walking past the farm. Um... Yeah, um, uh, like I said, these two seem to make a lot of sense. Now, I think, at very least, all the media should listen to these two, investigate what they've said, either dismiss it, or dismiss some parts, or clarify if what they've said is correct, because that rather than just being smugly sat there, and they're fat asses to be crude, going, oh, you're stupid if you don't go along with this. You have to believe. And don't forget, don't forget, folks, she was cleared on some charges. Cleared on some, so there was doubt on some. So we know that what was presented on some of the charges isn't, was clearly the verdict of this jury. And I don't know, I mean, we've got, remember, one jury member dropped out, which was that stress, um, you know, and then... The judge then came back and said well, he'll accept a majority verdict. So, again, I wonder if all the jury found her guilty. Um, I've been Googling, I can't find, but maybe, I don't know if they do t inform you of that, but that was something I was interested in. I mean, it went on weeks, didn't it, folks, this um, when the jury came out. It wasn't an instant decision. Um, now, I don't know if that's normal or not. Because I was expecting... You see, I have to put my hands up. I presume she was guilty all along. Because I just went along with it. I thought, oh, it's just somebody who's got mental problems. Um, she's just wasting everyone's time. The jail will be out and come back within two seconds and say guilty. And that's that. But there's none of that. And the other side of it is, as I say... We're not having any other friends or anyone who knows her coming out. Well, I think one person did, who was saying, yes, we found her odd. She had a control issue, maybe an ex-boyfriend or something, claiming she was very controlling or she controls the family. None of them are. Again, what's interesting is her friends and family are still supporting her. 
Now, yes, you can argue a family probably would do, but you're not a workmate. Not them coming out, because in reality, they're actually putting their career on the line by saying they, they stand by her. That's very unusual. Now, and it's also unusual, I'd say, that other nurses are backing her up. Because I don't think you would if you were sacked, you know, if you thought, yeah, she's guilty. The fact that people thinking she's acted normal, and again, there's nothing there. I mean, I would actually say that a guilty person would definitely not make notes. The fact she did seems to be the opposite. The fact she carried on after she's investigated. I don't think she even put in a complaint about being moved. And I don't think a guilty person would do that. I mean, if I was guilty, I'd be leaving the country, to be fair. Um, I wouldn't be carrying on. Um, I'd be in complete panic mode. Not depressing mode. And even when she was arrested, I mean, people saying, oh, yeah, that's a shocking face. She didn't look shocked. She looked like an innocent person being, you know, the police went. It was almost as if she was uh, expecting them just to come in for another chat. I mean, this is, I think she was arrested three times, apparently. don't know if that was the third one we see. But again, her behaviour, and again, listening to the court, what I'm listening to, she's answering all the questions caught clearly. She isn't getting angry, which again, usually people who are guilty sort of try and emphasise their innocence by shouting and stuff, or getting a bit upset, more stressed. And she doesn't seem to have tripped herself up, which is, again, what you do expect. And the questions, they're actually, I mean, again, I'm podcast 36, they're throwing things out, which, just to try and make her look dodgy, which I don't think are. For instance, they ask her, oh, um, she's apparently for two minutes in the day um, looked at her phone. And she says, and she says we're going, oh, are you, were you bored? Trying to suggest she's like um, mentally unwell and she's not interested. And she says, it's probably my break, which again, fair enough. And even if she did use her phone, I mean, you know, nurses do sit there making notes and stuff and... You know, they're not working 24, you know, they're not constantly at it. They're usually doing, you know, making the checkups and stuff, making notes. And there'll be times that they will be sat there. And I won't be surprised if it's not standard, you know, nurses don't look at the phones. Um, especially on the night shift when the patient's asleep. I'd have thought that would be quite common if you were just sat there and you're not doing much. Um, I w- Hopefully I that just recorded, I've just pressed the button and so it stopped. So I don't know if um, I'd be recording. I'm hoping it just stopped then. Now I've been talking. So we'll see. So if there is jumps in this, it's because I've probably done what I did. I was chatting the other day and I never pressed record. And sometimes because you can't see the, I've got this sort of what they call a dead cat over the mic. And it covers up the screen, so it's not always clear if it's recording or not. So, so I, you may find I make mistakes. In fact, one one of my talks, I messed up the editing, so it repeats. In fact, I've done it twice. I don't know how I've done it, but it's um, repeat sections. Um, but, you know, it's there. Anyway... Um, like I said, I think I've done what I, I, I might do more if I hear things. But, you know, when people when people are saying, oh, but there is evidence, I think you can, well, there isn't. I think everything's not, I mean, I don't think you even need to explain it, especially things like the notes. You see, the trouble is, is you have a lot of people who become amateur psychiatrists and like to invent things oh yes that shows guilt well no it doesn't yeah and if it doesn't show guilt then should it you know again i mean if you was t- I, again the so far all that seems to happened is these deaths are not murders or are they i mean that's the i uh, you know it seems to be there's been some deaths No evidence of murder, which is, you know, um, 
and just presuming there's been murders and it looks like I mean if this if the police had produced this chart and ignored some death just to make it more convenient to say oh these are all murders and she's on duty well that's appalling I mean that's just unbelievable I mean if that's if that's happened to me she should be just straight out of prison right now because you know that's the only bit of evidence they've got and that to me sounds like they've changed the data to suit them um, I mean that's frightening I mean if that's happened folks how can you trust the police if that's really happened folks I don't think you can trust the police because that means they're changing data all the time and um, can we then you know you then got a question all every other case especially by Manchester and again we know that that chap was from Manchester who was convicted of rape because of the way data was handled or evidence was handled um, I'm not anti-police, I've, I've always supported the police. Um, I mean, I'll say when they've done wrong, but I've always got on with the police and I've always thought they do a good job. But if we were having... Oh, hang on, I'll get off because someone's phoning. All right then, bye. Hi folks, sorry, just a friend of mine phoned. Um, anyway nothing to it, it, I couldn't I think it was busy working to be honest so I think I'll leave it there because I think we've covered everything um, like I said I've gone through everything and it just doesn't sound like there's anything pointing to this woman and you know when everyone's saying oh this is an evil woman who controls people again where's the evidence none we know I'll just repeat we know nurses take these um, shift pattern notes or whatever they call them home they in fact they're devised to for safety to because especially when you've got vulnerable patients which she had we know they make diaries we know also that unlike what the police seem to be saying lo was a code we know that every nurse it just shows you they don't um ld which is what she wrote means long day now you know, to me, there's a lot of things. They're either the police are either trying to. Uh, by the way, according to this chap, so we're pointing out that there was thousands of pages in this diary, and they only showed three that were convenient, so it was out of context. There was a lot of things. One of the things that seems to be what the police have put forward is evidence or circumstantial evidence out of context. Um, you know, it'd have been interesting if they'd actually entered the whole diary or diaries. And then explain well why is it looking normal why have you just done this out of context again is the stats being done out of context were there lots more deaths and they've just instantly dismissed them as normal deaths to make it out of context and do the police even doubt it i mean again we repeat the di said has gone and um, stated that he he or she would have expected to stop making notes when being investigated in other words as I've said what well, I think one could ascertain that could mean a guilty person would have stopped or if not destroyed everything none of that um, so what you're left with what you're left with what the doctors um, who may himself so don't forget it could be a case some of these doctors have been incompetent and just trying to pass a book she has made that claim Again, um, the Daily Mail podcast number 36, she informs us th um, her beliefs that there were mistakes made by doctors. Um, and again, the, um, the, you know, the prosecution then tries to change everything by claiming she's altered documents. And I don't know if there's evidence of that. If there is, fine. But if there's no evidence of it, and with the, with the jury, I don't know if the jury has shown any documents that the claim because if she hasn't changed documents then her account sounds accurate so then you know anyway there's so many questions here folks and again nothing seems to suggest she's guilty which is rather concerning 
it just seems to be manipulated to suggest um, there's so much on this but again obviously the media calling us crazy and stupid for even questioning any of it isn't that their job to question things aren't they there to analyse things um, shouldn't they be jumping up and down going hang about you've introduced this LO where other nurses are saying it's long day shouldn't that be you know, the most basic of research it almost sounds like the police haven't done any research anyway folks I'll get off hopefully well we'll see how things develop bye